As we've seen tonight, love and compassion between parents and their children is a very powerful and potent force. But the human heart is capable of reaching out to more than just family and friends. And when that happens, when men risk their own lives for the life of another, the word miracle takes on a whole new meaning. It becomes something we're all capable of achieving, if only we listen to our hearts. On February 5th, 1996, the peace and tranquility of the small town of Westfield, New Jersey was interrupted by an emergency call for help. Woodbury Fire Department volunteer Glenn Fleming rushed into action. I was in my truck getting some material for a job and my pager went off saying it was a cold water ice rescue. So I donned the uh, rescue equipment. We put the suits on here at the station because it was so cold outside that you don't want to be getting changed out in the uh, extreme cold weather. And then we responded from the station. At nearby National Park, the volunteer ice and cold water rescue team was also responding. Mark Gismondi was a member of this highly trained unit and fully aware of the great risks involved. But today's rescue would be unlike any he'd performed before. A dog had become trapped in the partially frozen waters of Big Timber Creek. Unable to climb on top of the thin ice, the animal was in a hopeless situation. But Mark was not going to give up. I believe they deserve to live just as much as a human deserves to live. And uh, we went into our operation just as if it was a human. The firefighters immediately launched two specialized rescue sleds designed to travel over both ice and open water. The plan was to encircle the dog with the sleds, but first, they'd have to reach him. It was a long distance. I had a heck of a time getting across the, uh, the, the current. There was an even bigger problem. This wasn't an ordinary dog. It was a wild animal, not used to being approached by men. At first, when I approached the dog, he did not want to see me. He actually snapped at me a few times. That's when he turned around and started to go the other direction. He was wet, icy, the ice was just freezing up on him. His limbs were just limp. He was going to go under, very exhausted. And then, just when it seemed that the dog might drown before they could reach it, something miraculous happened. He started coming over towards my way, and the yipes were getting louder and louder. If we didn't get to him, he wasn't going to make it. And um, he just turned around and so Woodbury sled. And I was pretty far out there, but thank God that the uh, dog changed his mind and started coming back to me. He was quite exhausted, but at the time he came back to me, I didn't think he was going to bite me because he wanted to see me. And I guess he realized it's now or never, you know, he better give, come back to me or whoever's closer. And, so we can get him out of there. I think this is so nice to think rescue the dog, you know? He put his paws up on the sled, I grabbed the hold up. I gave the signal, and we got pulled out of there. The ride to shore would not be without its own tense moment. But eventually, the dog and its rescuers were all brought to safety. I was very happy. It didn't matter to me what, what it was, an animal, you know, a human being. It was a living creature, and we wanted to rescue it. And uh, that's exactly what we did. The dog was immediately transported to the Gloucester County Animal Shelter. A veterinarian would later determine that the one-and-a-half-year-old Shepherd Collie mix had not been harmed by his ordeal. But the miracle didn't end there. It was quite a rescue today in Gloucester County, New Jersey. A dog found himself in the middle of the frozen Big Timber Creek. Video of the dog's dramatic rescue was broadcast nationwide, and the animal shelter was besieged with phone calls from people wanting to adopt the dog. But it would take a very special person to give this wild dog a home. Meet Jody Kayasa, the founder of a nonprofit dog rescue program in northern New Jersey that Splash, as she named him, now calls home. 
the fact that he'd been through so much and still had trouble adapting after that was, got to me. I figured probably the best thing for him would be to get someplace quiet, which really a shelter environment can't provide. He came here very traumatized. It was a long time before we were able to do anything with him. At first, we just fed him, and that was it, and let him alone, gave him a lot of peace and quiet. And then from there, just tried to get his trust, uh, feeding him by hand, sitting out there with him in the snow, in the rain, uh, holding a food dish, trying to get him to come over and eat. It doesn't seem that he'll ever be able to live in a house where there's phones ringing and doors opening and people coming and going. I don't think he'll ever be able to handle that. But I think he would be very content with another companion dog out there to interact with and he gets his medical needs taken care of and his food and a warm place to sleep and I think he'll be very happy with that. <laughs>